Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the lower bearing on your washer. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to disconnect the washer from all of its supplies. So first thing we'll need to do is pull it forward, disconnect the power. We'll also need to turn off the inlet water supplies, remove both fill hoses, and pull the drain hose out of the drain, and then pull the washer forward so that we can access all the way around it. Now with the washer pulled out where we can get at it, we're going to first of all tilt it back. We you need somebody to help support that washer or have it available to lean up against a wall. Make sure it's stable. And then we're going to remove that belt from the bottom. And we'll just set that aside for now. We'll now stand the washer back up. Now with the belt removed, our next step is going to be to raise the main top and lid assembly and tilt it back. So we're going to take a thin putty knife, we're going to win this gap between the front panel and the main top. Slide towards the inside until you feel some resistance and that will be a spring clip. So just pull a putty knife out, line it up on that spring clip, push in on it, there should be some resistance. With it pushed in, we can just lift up on the top. We'll hold it in that position. Do the same on the opposite side. And then we can lift that whole top and lid assembly. And we'll lean that up against the wall. Now if you don't have a wall close by, use a restraint to tie from the top of that lid to the frame of the washer. Don't rely on the hinges on the top to uh, support that. Now our next step will be to take the two 5 16 screws out to secure the front panel to the washer cabinet. Just tilt the front panel forward and lift it off the hooks at the bottom. We'll just set that aside. Now our next step will be to remove all of these six suspension springs from the base of the tub as well as disconnect the tub to pump hose. We're going to pull this whole tub assembly, both inner and outer tubs, agitator, transmission, that whole assembly right out of the washer so that we can change that bearing. Now that we have access to those springs, we we'll have to unhook the top portion of each of those six springs from either a hook or the suspension leg all the way around that tub. Now if you're fortunate enough to be able to borrow one of these from a local service company. That will aid in lifting those springs out of their position. They simply fit the lower portion of that tool into the detent in the base, line the top it up with the hook on the spring, squeeze it together, and that will release the spring. If you don't have access to one of those, you can use a pair of blocking pliers, but just use enough force to disconnect the spring. Try not to overstretch it. Just grasp the long arm of that spring. Make sure it's clamped on tightly. And just stretch it enough to release it. I'll continue to do that for the rest of the springs. The two at the very back, we may need to go through the rear access panel to get at those. It's probably a little easier from that angle. Now to remove that rear access panel, you can either leave the drain hose in place or remove it. If you choose to remove it, you'll find that there's going to be some water in there, so you'll need something to collect that. We're simply going to squeeze that clamp together, pull it up onto the hose, then twist the hose off of the outlet of the pump, and pull it off completely. Now we can set that aside, remove the screws that secure that access panel. And that will give you a better view of the springs at the rear. So just reach in through that opening, 
Remove the last of the sprays. Now that we've released all six springs, we next need to disconnect that tub to pump hose. From the top, you can just reach down and remove that clamp. From the back, you can either take it from off the tub or from off of the pump, either way. Again, we're simply going to squeeze that clamp together and then slide it up onto the hose. Twist the hose to release it. And now we're ready to go back to the front of the washer. Now that we have access to the top and front of the washer again, what I'm going to do next is to Disconnect the air dome tube from the side of the outer tub. So just pull the tub away from that tube. Just squeeze the clamp together and pull that hose right off of the air dome. And that will allow us to pull the tub assembly out. Now next we're going to lift that tub up slightly, tilt the bottom of it out through the opening, and then we can change that part. So you may need some help to lift that tub assembly. We'll lift it straight up so that the pulley comes up through the base frame. Then tilt it out through the front. And then we'll take that whole assembly and we're going to turn it right upside down. Now our next step will be to remove the dust cap off the lower pulley. Just so grasp the side of it and pop that off. Then we'll next need to remove that E-ring that secures the cam assembly and the pulley to the lower shaft of the transmission. Let's take a flat blade screwdriver and just pry that E-ring away. Lift off the spacer washer, then you can lift the pulley and cam assembly off of the transmission shaft. Now there will be a spring washer, flat washer, and a bearing beneath that. So we'll pull those off of the shaft and set them aside. Just take note of the order that you remove them. And finally, the large flat washer at the very bottom. So we'll set those items aside. Now our next step will be to remove the six bolts that secure the damper base to the support. Just remove the six half inch head bolts.
next step will be to remove that brake stator from that assembly. Now, there's a coil spring in beneath that rotor that pushes the rotor against the brake stator. And that's about a 200 pound pressure spring. So if you don't have the proper tool to remove that, we're simply going to take some longer screws, remove three of the existing screws, which are only about three quarters of an inch long. So we'll give some screws the same thread that are about an inch and a half long. We'll begin by removing three of those. Just remove three of the shorter ones. And replace them with three longer ones. Most of these models are a 3 16 diameter screw with about a number 24 thread on them. But you'll want to verify that you have the exact same one that you're removing. And we're going to tighten those long screws. Now, once we've replaced those three short screws with three longer ones, we'll remove the last of the short ones. And then we'll remove the three long ones a few turns each in succession. Now once the tension of the spring has been released, just remove the screws completely. Lift the brake stator off, slide the brake rotor off, remove the spring, the cap for the spring, and the damper assembly. So at this point, we'll take out the remaining three half inch bolts to secure the damper base to that bearing. Now with the bolts removed, we can lift that damper base away from the transmission and bearing assembly and just set it aside. Now our next step will be to use a puller to take that bearing off of that shaft. Preferably a three jaw puller, but a two jaw will work. And the one thing we need to be cautious of is we can't put the center point of that puller onto that transmission shaft or we'll push the shaft into the transmission and damage it. So what we'll do is we're going to take a three quarter inch pipe nipple and put a cap on top of it and that'll sit right on the housing of the transmission. Now next we'll need to use the puller that has at least a eight inch draw length between the center point and the end of the arms. Now make sure that the arms on that puller actually catch the bearing and not the plastic casing. And then we'll use a wrench to tighten that screw.
Then lift that bearing off the rest of the shaft and we can discard it. So next we'll make sure that that surface that the bearing inner race will sit on is nice and clean, free from any corrosion. We may put just a little bit of a lubricant on there and we try to use something that will dissolve. We wanna make sure that the bearing actually sticks to that shaft. So just put a thin film around there to help for that bearing to slide on. Now when installing that bearing, make sure that we position it so that those tabs face up. And then we're going to gently tap that bearing down onto the shaft. Now ideally, it'd be nice to have a piece of round pipe that will slide down over that shaft and just rest on the inner race of that bearing. But you can also use a wooden block and just tap gently on the inner race only. Just remember when using this method to put that bearing on that we only tap on the inner race of the bearing. Now once we have that bearing firmly seated on the transmission shaft, just make sure that that casing is pulled upwards and then sight in below that and make sure we do have it bottomed out. And then we're ready to put the damper base on. So we're going to line up the three notched openings on that damper base with those tabs on the bearing case. And then we'll attach it with the bolts that came with the new bearing. Now we won't tighten these bolts until we have all three of them installed. And then while holding that damper base, we'll tighten them securely. Well, next we'll clean that damper base Make sure it's free of any dust or grease. We'll then reinstall the bolts that secure the damper base to the suspension legs. So we begin by putting one bolt in each of the three legs. And the hole should line up freely. And if not, it just means that you don't have the bearing down far enough. So double check that before you tighten any of the bolts. And we'll put all six of them in before we tighten any of them. Now 
Now, once we have all six of them snugged up, we just go ahead and tighten them. And now we're ready to put the snubber and brake assemblies back in. Again, we'll clean that area and wipe down the snubber ring. Make sure it's free of any dirt or debris. And if you wish, you can coat that with a light layer of cornstarch, then place it in the opening. Next, we'll put the spring cap in. Place the spring into the cap. Take our brake rotor, line that up with the splines on the transmission, and press it down. And then take the brake stator and line up the holes with the holes on the snubber. And then we'll carefully line up the holes on that brake stator with the holes on the damper base. And then we'll use our long screws install the three of them in a triangular fashion. Now, as we get close to tightening those, just verify that the remaining three holes still line up, and then we'll put those short screws in. Make sure the snubber ring is centered. Tighten the three short screws until they bottom out. Then we'll remove the long ones. and then continue to install the last three short ones. Verify that they're all tight. And now we're ready to put the bearing and lower pulley back on. We'll begin by putting the a large flat washer in place and if you have the single piece thrust bearing it will go on next if you have the original version it'll be a thin washer the thrust bearing and then either a thin or a thick washer depending on your model a spring washer So next we'll put the remaining spacer washer on top of that spring washer. And if the cam has dropped out of your pulley, we'll need to assemble that next. You'll note that there's a flat side on that cam and then a side with two ramps on it. The ramped sides will go into the pulley to make up with the ramps on the pulley itself. And the large portion on that cam will fit into the larger opening on the pulley. So it will sit like that. 
Place the whole assembly onto the agitator shaft. You may need to rotate that cam a little bit to line up with the splines. And now we're ready to put the retaining washer and e-ring in place. So we begin by taking a flat blade screwdriver, just press down on that cam and pulley assembly, use your flat blade to go into that little groove on the end of that shaft and just pry it up a little bit. We can then drop that flat washer on, then do the same thing. Use the flat blade to hold that shaft upright. Slide our E-ring into position. And then using a pair of pliers, we'll squeeze it the rest of the way onto the shaft. We then put the dust cap back on. Just center it in the pulley and snap it into place. And now we're ready to put that whole assembly back into the washer. Before we do that, we want to take and clean the area of the base frame where that damper is going to sit. Make sure that it's free of any debris, any dirt or rust. We'll clean that up as best as we can. And again, if you wish, you can put a little bit of cornstarch on that area that'll help with the dampening action. Now with that area cleaned up, we're ready to put the tub back in. And you may wish to use some assistance in lifting it into position. Use caution that we don't rest the weight of that on that pulley. And then lower it down onto the base frame. Now we're ready to Reconnect all of these suspension springs, the tub to pump hose, and the drain hose if you've removed that. Now some of the springs we'll be able to access from the front. The two at the very back we'll need to do from access panel at the rear. Now we we'll wanna make sure that we line that tub up in the proper position. Typically this label should be towards the front and the large tab for the tub cover will be in this position here. With that lined up properly, the spring just to the left of center should line up with the suspension leg. Now make sure that we properly install that spring into the base before we attempt to attach it to the suspension arm. Now if we're fortunate enough to have the spring tool, we'll just go ahead and use that and put it into position. If not, you'll need to use your locking pliers and stretch the spring just enough to fit into that large hole at the top of the suspension leg. Again, before we attach any spring, make sure that we have the loose end poked up through that hole in the base. Once you have the two front ones in place, you may wish to put the two rear ones in to counteract the pull of those springs. You'll need somebody to push that tub towards you as you install the remaining springs on the back. Now with the two rear springs connected, since we're at the back of the machine, we'll take the opportunity to reconnect the tub to pump hose. So fit it down over the pump, push it on all the way until it bottoms out. 
And using our pliers, we're going to move that clamp down into position. And then we'll put the rear access panel on. So just line up the panel so that the opening is only the pump outlet. And then secure it with the four screws. And we can also put the drain hose on while we're here. Let's position it over the outlet of the pump, press it on firmly. And then secure it with the clamp. Now we'll attach the remaining springs to the tub. And then we get the last spring here. Now next we'll need to reconnect the air dome tube. We simply need to line that tube up on the outlet of the tub. Just to press that little clamp. Make sure we push the hose firmly down onto that air dome. And then we can go ahead and put the front panel on. Now next we'll reinstall that front panel. Just make sure that we line up those Slotted openings in the bottom edge of the panel with the two hooks that are attached to the base frame. Make sure it sits firmly down into those. Line up the locating pins on the side of the cabinet with the oval openings on the back side of that front panel. Press the panel into place and secure it with the two retaining screws. Now ready to lower the main top and lid. And again, we're going to line up two locating pins, two round holes in the front lip of that top panel. And then snap it into place. Now with the top snapped down firmly into place, we'll pull the washer forward enough that we can tilt it against the wall and we'll put the drive belt on. Now that we have the front panel on and the top down, we're ready to put the drive belt back on. So we've tilted the washer up against the wall or have somebody support it for you. Then we'll wrap the belt around the motor pulley and the pump pulley. You may need to put a little tension on that motor pulley to slacken that belt some. And then we're just going to roll it onto the large pulley. And now we're ready to stand the washer back up. We're now ready to push the washer back into the position, reconnect our inlet fill hoses and our drain hose, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete. <laughs>